So this is something that I originally just wrote down and it's a story about a friend of mine who I grew up with. I didn't really intend to make a video out of it, but after I was done writing it, I felt like it was a story that I wanted to share and it was just something that I wanted to talk about. So if anybody's interested in listening to it, here's the story of my friend Drew. I met Drew when I was about eight years old. He was the first kid that I met in my neighborhood and he was like my first real friend that I had. I'm Cuban, I grew up in Miami, most of the kids I went to school with were either Spanish or black, and I didn't really know any white people. And Drew was the first white kid I ever met. Drew just lived right down the street from me, and we became really good friends. We started hanging out together all the time. He was about a year younger than me, and he was also an only child. In a lot of ways, he was like a little brother to me. He would come over and we would play all the time. We would hang out, we would go to the park, we would ride our bikes around the neighborhood. And on weekends, I remember Drew coming over to my house and banging on my window until I would wake up. This would cause us to fight sometimes, but just like the pseudo brothers that we were, we would make up and keep playing the next day. And there was no hard feelings most of the time. Even though Drew lived in my neighborhood, his parents sent him to a school in a different area because they were worried that he would fall victim to his surroundings. The neighborhood we lived in wasn't the best neighborhood and there was a lot of crime and there was a lot of violence and plenty of drugs and a lot of bad stuff that you probably don't want your kid getting involved with. So his parents did the right thing and they tried to send him to a better school in a different neighborhood. So Drew and I didn't really go to school together and his parents tried really hard to keep him away from all the stuff that was in our neighborhood. I mentioned before that I didn't really know any white kids and the neighborhood that we grew up in was an Afro-Latino neighborhood. There was a lot of Cubans and Puerto Ricans and Dominicans. There wasn't any white people. So Drew really, really didn't fit in. And it was hard for him to be accepted by other kids in the neighborhood because of the fact that he was white. And this would often cause problems and it would get Drew in the fights and Drew would get picked on because of this. But that never stopped Drew and he would still come around. Eventually he was given the name White Boy, which he embraced and that's what everybody referred to him as. Drew was a good kid. He was in the sport. He had a few hobbies that were different than what other kids in my neighborhood were into. I remember he liked to rollerblade and he would listen to Vanilla Ice, which used to cause people to want to beat him up. But it was his personality that he never let that stop him from trying to be himself. And that was just Drew. He wasn't ever really considered a tough kid, but he was a lot tougher than most of us gave him credit for. And even though I wasn't necessarily a bad kid myself, I used to like doing bad stuff and things that would get me in trouble. I don't know, maybe I was just an angry kid looking for attention, but that was just my personality when I was younger. I remember doing stuff like breaking windows of abandoned buildings and throwing rocks at cars as they passed over the bridge that was right by my house. Drew and I even got in trouble once because he brought over his BB gun and we started shooting at the bridge tower. I still remember the guy that was in that tower getting on the speaker and yelling like, whoever's doing in that stop and eventually um, he came down and figured out where it was coming from and we got into a lot of trouble because of that. The truth is that Drew's parents didn't really like me and rightfully so. I mean I was a bad influence on Drew and his mom actually really didn't like my mom. His parents were recovering alcoholics and they would attend AA meetings and things like that and my mom was a heavy drinker who drank almost every night. At one point, I think my mom may have pulled a knife on Drew's mom, but I don't really remember and neither does my mom, but I'm almost certain that that happened. Drew's parents actually started paying him to not hang out with me. I think this lasted for about a year or so, but we would still see each other around the neighborhood and we would still hang out and not let his parents know, but that was just for a short while because you can only make your kids do something for so long and Drew and I were good friends at that point. So we would st still catch each other at the park and we would still ride our bikes around occasionally. But I wasn't allowed over at his house for a while. Eventually we went back to hanging out as we did before. And because we were getting older, we started getting into more and more trouble. And the things that we started to do were getting worse and worse. See, I really was a big influence on Drew and I was a bad influence on Drew. And I remember he looked up to me a lot and he would do a lot of the stuff that I did. The first time Drew smoked a cigarette was with me. The first time Drew drank a beer was with me. The first time he smoked weed was with me. That just escalated until we were doing drugs together and we were getting in more and more trouble together. It's weird because when we were young, we rode our bikes together in the neighborhood and as we got older, we actually rode in stolen cars together in the same neighborhood. 
And I mentioned that his parents sent him to a better school when he was younger. Eventually, Drew stopped attending the school that his parents were sending him to because he was getting in trouble. And at one point in time in middle school, Drew actually attended my middle school for a short time until he got kicked out and went to opportunity school. Around that time, Drew and I had a bit of a falling out. He started hanging out with a few different kids that I didn't really hang out with too often. I knew them, but we just didn't hang out. And like I mentioned, there was a lot of times that I didn't really treat Drew nicely. Part of the falling out that we had was that I would pick on Drew a lot because I was always like a big brother to him and he was like my little annoying brother and we would get into fights. And it's still something that bugs me because Drew was a good friend and I had no reason for treating him like that other than I was just a kid. And again, maybe it was just because I was an angry kid who needed to take it out on someone. But I would, I would pick on Drew a bit and I remember that when we had this falling out, Drew came over to my house with those kids he was hanging out with and he basically challenged me to a fight. And it was the one time that Drew like got some licks on me and I remember that he busted my lip and he made my nose bleed and he, he won the fight. It was a shot to my ego at the time. I was always bigger than him. He was always smaller than me, but he got the best of me that day. And eventually we ended up squashing it and we were friends again because that was just a dynamic of our relationship and our friendship because since we were like brothers, that's how brothers are. They fight, they make up, and they're friends again. So after that falling out and after some time had passed after Drew beat me up, we were friends again. At this point, I think I was getting older. I was probably about 15 or 16. Drew, again, being a year younger than me, was probably 14 or 15. When we would hang out, we would drink as often as we could. We would do whatever drugs we could get our hands on. And we started to become addicts. And this is when we started to become addicted to drugs and drinking. And we were young and we were getting in a lot of trouble. Drew actually got arrested right around this time. Him and a few other kids were asking people for cigarettes outside of a gas station and some dude told them off and next thing you know they jumped this older guy and a few of my friends including Drew catch their first case and get arrested. Shortly after that there was a time that we were all hanging out and we were drinking and, and Drew had got caught stealing from his dad and we would steal from our parents so that we can support our habits and I shamefully have to admit that I would steal from my mom and Drew stole from his dad and he got caught and Drew's dad beat the brakes off of him. Drew's dad left him black and blue. I, I mean, he was, was beat up. It was really bad. And I remember Drew coming to us as a group and like crying and saying how his dad hated him. And we were all drinking and smoking at the time. And the way I responded wasn't the way I should have responded. And I should have showed him a little more empathy. And I'm looking back now, if I try to think why I reacted that way, I don't know, maybe because there was other people around, maybe because I didn't have a dad myself. So I was just like, whatever, just toughen up, big deal. You got beat up by your dad. I mean, remember we were kids. He was probably like 15 years old or 14. It was just a shit way for me to respond. And I still think about that to this day. And if you've been watching my videos, you know my story more or less that I left Miami because I got arrested a bunch of times and my mom moved me out to go to Las Vegas. And at the time um, of moving out, I remember that Drew helped us pack. He helped us get all our belongings out of our house. He helped me pack my car. And it was weird because he was the first kid that I met and I knew in my neighborhood. He was also the last person that I saw before I left. I remember saying goodbye to him as we were leaving. He cried, I cried, and it was a moment, right? Like, like we were really good friends. I was moving out and we were like brothers and he was gonna miss me and we didn't know when we were gonna see each other again. And then after I, I moved out of Miami, a lot of time passed before I went back to visit because I had no reason to go back. I also didn't really have the money to go back. And I constantly worried about going back because early on when I moved, I didn't want to move from Miami. And it took about 10 years before I ever went back to Miami to go visit. When I finally did go back to Miami to visit after 10 years, I visited with my wife. We were dating at the time, but she's the one that really pushed me to go to Miami so I can see my uncle and I can go back and visit my friends. And I remember landing at the airport, picking up the rental car. And the first thing I did was go to my old house. It was the house I grew up in. And of course I wanted to see it because my uncle had sold it and I hadn't been there for 10 years. And I just wanted to see what it looked like because 
It, it had been so long that I kind of forgot what it looked like. And that was the very first thing I did. The very next thing I did immediately after that was drive up the block and go to Drew's house. At this time, I had spoken to Drew a few times over the phone after I moved to Vegas, but we didn't really keep in touch. And we eventually kind of just didn't talk for a while. So I pull up in front of Drew's house and he had this house that had like really tall fence with, with bushes around it. And he used to have these two big ass dogs and he still had those big dogs. And I remember screaming his name from the fence how I did when I was a kid. And his dad came out and I asked if he was there. He said, yeah, he's in the garage. I would say it was about 9 a.m. or so. And I was happy to hear that he was there because, because of the life that he kept living, I was expecting him to not be there or be in jail or, or somewhere else. I didn't expect him to be at home. And it just so happens that he was. So I walked into the garage and he was sleeping on a dirty cot. There was empty beer bottles everywhere. There was cigarette butts and weed roaches laying around. And he was just sleeping on this dirty little cot in the garage. It was very odd to see him like that. At this point in time, I had, I had been living a little bit better of a life. You know, I was, I was parking cars in Vegas. I was making some money. I, I had a, a steady girlfriend and we were at the point of like moving in together and a lot of things were going good for me. And then to go back and see Drew doing so poorly, it was kind of sad. Now he was, he was asleep and, and I tried to wake him up. I was like, Hey Drew, what's up, man? And he was so drunk and hung over from the night before that I could still like smell the alcohol on him and he basically like waved me off and I was like hey man it's it's Dorian like I haven't seen you in 10 years and all he said was like oh come back later come back later I left and I didn't go back to see him I didn't talk to him again after that apart from being slightly offended by the fact that he was just like oh go away come back later what what really got to me was seeing him living the way he was living, sleeping on a dirty cot in the garage of his parents' house. It made me feel like, like I looked into what could have been my life. And, you know, I was never a hardcore criminal. I, I mean, maybe I would have ended up becoming one, but I felt like addiction and, and drugs were a bigger thing for me than than going out and committing crimes to to you know come up off of somebody i was more about just like getting high and getting drunk and it felt like he was frozen in time it felt like he was still doing the same exact thing that he was doing when i left miami and we were teenagers and at this point, you know, I think I was 26, so he, that would have made him like 25. I saw it through some of my other friends when I was there, but it really hit too close to home with Drew. I really saw myself a lot in Drew, and I feel like I saw what could have been my life if I would have stayed in Miami. And that was hard for me to accept, and I didn't want to go back to that. Didn't want to show Drew like how nice my life was and how much better I was doing than he was, and I didn't want to bring him down and I didn't want to come down to his level um, because it just, I didn't want to do that when I was there. And I don't know, it's hard to explain. It's, it's hard to explain and it's something I think about a lot still to this day and that was like 10 years ago now. A short while after I left Miami, Drew was shot and killed by a police officer. The officer claimed that Drew had a knife on him and charged at him. This happened at 2 a.m. outside of a pool hall. It was the same pool hall that we used to hang around when we were kids. It was the same pool hall that was next to the pizza shop that we would ride our bikes to to get a dollar slice of pizza. It was the same pool hall that was across the street from the gas station that Drew got arrested at for the first time. It was the same pool hall that was down the street from the abandoned field that we used to sneak into to drink and smoke at when we were young kids. It was the same pool hall that was down the street where me and Drew got jacked for a bag of weed when I was about 14 years old. Even though I got the bag of weed back from that older kid that took it from me that day, I got beat up and I remember being really mad at Drew for not helping me. It was also the same pool hall that was down the street from where we crashed our first stolen car and fled the scene of an accident. I regret that I never reached out to Drew. I regret that I wasn't a better friend to him growing up. I regret that I was such a bad influence on Drew. I, I feel that maybe a lot of the stuff that he got into may have been because of me. I feel that maybe because I was just such a shit little kid and I was his first real friend that he looked up to and that he played with a lot and that we were just so close 
that maybe if I wasn't so shitty and maybe if I hadn't been such a bad kid myself and maybe if Drew didn't look up to me, maybe he'd still be here. I sometimes think about like, what if he would have just got in the car with us when we were leaving for Vegas? Maybe his life would have changed like mine did. I think about him often and I still feel like I might be a bad friend. His mom, who I haven't talked to in years, um, she won a wrongful death suit against the city of Miami police for Drew being shot by that police officer. Even though the police officer claimed that he had a knife on him, there was multiple witnesses that said that he didn't. It doesn't matter how much money she won in that, it won't bring her son back. And I hope she's doing all right. My heart goes out to her and I, I feel even worse that I've never reached out to her to ask her how she's doing. I know that there was a few of the neighborhood friends that were trying to get close to her to, to hopefully make some money from her for the settlement because there's a bunch of opportunists that we grew up with. And I never wanted to reach out to her and make her feel that that I, I wanted any of that. And I also feel that maybe part of it has to do with the fact that I feel somewhat responsible with how Drew grew up and being a big influence on him and you know, contributing to his delinquency. And maybe that's why I just feel like I can't reach out to her to talk to her about it and just see how she's doing. With all that said, that was the story of my friend Drew. Rest in peace, white boy. Miss you, man.